There was a time in which the name in the stealth game genre was Hideo Kojima's epic series Metal Gear Solid. Solid Snake and his entourage of strange characters and towering mechs saw occasional competitors in games like Tenchu and Thief, but it wasn't until Ubisoft threw their hat in the ring in 2002 with Tom Clancy's Splinter Cell in which the gigantic Japanese franchise really would have a challenger to the throne. Over the years, the Splinter Cell series has grown in ways both exciting and unexpected, with 2007's Double Agent marking the end of the traditional formula and 2010's Conviction ushering in a more action-oriented one. Conviction, however, became the most polarizing title of the series, and though its more personal story approach was appreciated, many lamented the kill-everyone-and-move-on gameplay that permeated most of the experience. Ubisoft seems to have taken this fan feedback to heart, and this year has brought us Blacklist, a seemingly more balanced quote-unquote greatest hits take on the variety of gameplay formulas across the 11 years of this series' history. Are these changes enough to save Splinter Cell from a spiraling downfall and becoming the next Resident Evil? Jam everything and move out. The Blacklist is live. Now. Several months after the devastating EMP attack on Washington, D.C. by Tom Reed's corrupt third echelon, former Splinter Cell Sam Fisher is still trying to figure out his future. After having joined up with friend Victor Koss's Paladin 9 private security firm, while on a routine trip to Guam, Sam and Victor caught up in a massive terrorist attack, one that devastates Anderson Air Force Base. Vic is hurt in the attack, and Sam, along with their tech advisor Charlie Cole, are barely able to make it out alive. Shortly thereafter, a group known as the Engineers claims responsibility, promising a series of even more devastating attacks every seven days until America withdraws their troops from abroad. In response, U.S. President Caldwell, remembering Sam's rescue of her during conviction, approaches Fisher with an offer, complete authority over a new fourth echelon initiative that only answers to her. Together with Syria's ally Anna Grimm's daughter, Charlie, and new recruit Isaac Briggs, Sam must hunt down the engineers before they are able to complete their deadly countdown. In many ways, Splinter Cell Blacklist attempts to bring us a story focused on a renewed Sam Fisher and a revitalized, more basic Echelon initiative. This also provides an opportunity to reintroduce us to characters from previous games as well as bringing new ones. It is here that, from a character standpoint, Blacklist falters. Sam is easily the biggest victim of this. Splinter Cell Conviction's story was focused far more significantly on him and his search for Sarah in proportion to how much the story was centered around Third Echelon's attack on Washington, D.C. Instead of giving us a more character-driven narrative, Ubisoft has instead pushed his character back to what he was like pre-Conviction, a trained operative with drive but less personality. It's confusing as to why Ubisoft would avoid character development for Sam Fisher when the entire previous game was about just that, and ultimately, I found it to be quite disappointing. Not that this story is meant to bring a focus more on any sort of character development. Instead, Ubisoft's presentation of Blacklist is focused more on in-the-moment storytelling than grand plot development, giving us a story that links back-to-back -back levels together rather than spending a massive web conspiracy. It's unfortunately par for the course as a Tom Clancy title rather than the exception. The story will entertain you, but it probably won't be winning any awards, least of all being all that memorable six months to a year down the road. Splinter Cell has changed significantly since the 2005 title Chaos Theory, but nowhere is this more prevalent than in the design and gameplay changes. Many, including Ubisoft, have likened Splinter Cell Blacklist to that of a sort of greatest hits amalgamation of everything that made the previous installment such interesting titles. I find that I have to agree with this sentiment. In its most basic sense, Blacklist is the spawn of the marriage of two vastly different Splinter Cell titles, Chaos Theory and Conviction. Returning is the time-honored focus of sneaking through an environment, avoiding enemies, and engaging in combat as little as possible. This is combined, however, with Conviction's much faster pace, creating a far more rapid sense of level traversal and, thus, a much more mobile main character. This combination is simply the best of both worlds and balances out just how powerful Sam was in Conviction with how vulnerable he can be in the original titles. In fact, many of the issues people had with Conviction seem to have been addressed. 
Our hero was no longer forced to kill everyone in sight as he was in almost all of Conviction, and it is in fact possible to beat the game without Sam killing anyone. In addition, many of the maps present are both large and open-ended, allowing for multiple approaches and playstyles. Enemy AI has seen a dramatic improvement, offering more intricate and random search patterns looking for intruders. Blacklist features a revamped mark and execute system returning from Conviction as well. Putting an emphasis on Sam's predatory nature, Blacklist has introduced an abduction system for easier melee access to enemies. Side missions are another new addition to the game. Though they don't contribute to the overall plot in any significant way, side missions can still be fun to do. Each of your principal cast will have their own set of missions you can take on, including ghost missions, terrorist hunts, survival matches, and two-player co-op. Ubisoft has also introduced a new scoring system that adapts to the way players approach the game. Though it can technically be played as a typical third-person shooter, Blacklist properly emphasizes stealth gameplay over anything else, rewarding higher points for sneakier actions. The system also generates currency that, in turn, can be spent on upgrading your equipment and characters across single-player and multiplayer, but more on that in a moment. One of the more surprising aspects of the game is something that might surprise fans of the Mass Effect series, your headquarters. Much like the Normandy, 4th Echelon is run out of the Paladin, a massive airship that allows Sam and crew to remain mobile and to quickly react to terrorist threats. The player, as Sam, can freely move about the Paladin to interact with the principal cast. This is also the only point in which you can make contact with Sarah Fisher, which is disappointing since you only ever hear her but never actually see her. One final item that I simply must point out is the game's perfectionist mode. Splinter Cell veterans who were disappointed with the direction Conviction took will be pleased to hear that Perfectionist reverts many of the rules to those of much earlier Splinter Cell titles. Sonar goggles do not work, targets can be marked but not executed, and combat is extremely difficult to survive. These seemingly simple restrictions completely change the way you would otherwise play Blacklist, and offers a level of challenge that should definitely be experienced by stealth game fans. If you consider yourself a Splinter Cell fan, you are doing yourself a disservice by not playing this difficulty. If you can ghost in and steal system access, there's no telling what we'll find. While the single player is entertaining, the true highlight of Splinter Cell Blacklist is the long-awaited return of Spies vs. Mercenaries competitive multiplayer. Like the effort Ubisoft put into balancing out Blacklist's old and new gameplay styles, the multiplayer is taking what was best about Pandora Tomorrow and Chaos Theory's 2v2 action and updated many systems and level design to facilitate a more expanded experience. For the purist like me, SVM Classic is the absolute best way to play. This 2v2 mode harkens back to the early days of Splinter Cell multiplayer. Customized classes for both sides cannot be used, and instead are limited to a few key items that were previously featured in the earlier games. Levels have also been relit to emphasize shadows and exploration, with the mercs armed with a flashlight and the spies only having access to night vision. These limitations, coupled with the redesigned light maps, make for incredibly tense experiences that will induce paranoia in both teams. It's an intense, fun experience, and one I feel that seeps into my soul, begging me to go back and play any hour of the day. We need men on sea station, it's breached. SVM Blacklist, as well as the other three modes, offer the same experience, albeit in a up to 4v4 setting. These do a surprisingly good job of playing hide and seek in an enjoyable manner, despite fears that it would have become a more action-oriented experience. These four modes also allow access to an assortment of character class modification options. New vision modes, weapons, gadgets, and class bonuses make the gameplay very team-oriented and discourage playing as a lone wolf. Spies vs. Mercs also has competent map design, taking into account spawn points, hiding spots, and certain areas of the map that only spies can access. Each map feels unique and fun, and I look forward to seeing the game's inevitable DLC. In short, Spies vs. Mercs Triumphant Return is something that should be celebrated. The final year of a console generation tends to yield the best looking titles the system can provide, and in some respects, Splinter Cell Blacklist fits that description. Character animations in particular are very nicely done, with cutscenes rendering some tense moments. 
Sam's takedowns in particular will wow you at times, both for the intricacy that goes into the move, as well as the sheer brutality. If the sort of mocap while acting seen in games such as Enslaved and Blacklist are the future, I look forward to seeing what's in store. The music department needs some work though. Gone are almost all the orchestral scores done for Conviction, save for the core theme, which is mainly used when Sam is on the phone with Sarah. Michael McCann, famous for his work on Deus Ex Human Revolution, as well as XCOM Enemy Unknown from last year, composed the soundtrack, but what has been brought to the table doesn't seem to be nearly as strong as expected. McCann was also responsible for the Splinter Cell Double Agent soundtrack, but none of that depth or excitement seems to be present in Blacklist. It's par for the course, honestly, and doesn't seem to be worth your cash to listen to outside the game. By far, the most egregious error Ubisoft has made with Blacklist is also the most obvious one, and I cannot bring this to a close without addressing it. The voice acting changes. Sam Fisher, long voiced by experienced actor Michael Ironside, has been replaced by Eric Johnson, a recent actor known for his work on television shows such as Criminal Minds. This change is a stark contrast to say the least, and will jar anyone who has ever experienced any of the Splinter Cell games. The transition from an older voice to that of a much younger one simply doesn't make sense for a character that has long been touted as a more seasoned, older operator, something that Ubisoft was quick to talk up in the early years of Splinter Cell when they were having to compete with the Metal Gear franchise. Now David Hayter being replaced by Kiefer Sutherland is something I can understand since the character of Big Boss has aged considerably and has experienced scarring and battle fatigue as the Metal Gear series has gone on. It is a terrible decision in my opinion, and should definitely be reevaluated when the next title comes out in a few years. Ubisoft claims that this decision was made because they wanted to do the kind of voice acting during mocap sessions I spoke of earlier. Get your act together guys! Sam Fisher is Michael Ironside. End of discussion. Splinter Cell may be a decade old at this point, but despite years of trends such as the rise of the competitive FPS or the MOBA, it has stayed relatively true to the formula save for 2010's conviction. Blacklist may fail in the story department, but its balance of classic, more methodical stealth gameplay with faster pacing seen in more modern design yields a very exciting amalgamation across all three gameplay modes. The single player may disappoint, but the multiplayer offerings more than make up for it, with Spies vs Mercs almost feeling like it's worthy of being a standalone product. Ubisoft felt that Splinter Cell needed a revamp with 2010's Conviction, and many disagreed. Blacklist serves as a balancing act between where they wanted to take the franchise and what series fans loved and wanted, and the result is one of the best Splinter Cell experiences to date, just shy in my opinion of the stellar chaos theory. It's a return to form and one that I hope will be the benchmark for the series going forward.